Thanks for watching Double Tap on YouTube. In this clip from our second episode of season number five, we talk about our favorite keyboards from Logitech and other companies. Check it out. You're watching Double Tap TV. Thank you guys for being with us each and every single week. I am Marco Flalo and Stephen Scott, of course, here every week with us talking all things keyboards today. Now, Stephen, I have to make a confession here. Let's call this keyboard confessions. Now, you may have okay. a lot of keyboards at your disposal. Okay, lots of keyboards yes. in front of you. And you got a lot going on there. But I have to admit something. I transitioned to a Mac later on in life. I feel like I need some like drama, dramatic music in the background. Um, cue music. Yeah. Uh, I transitioned to a Mac later on in life when certain programs were available to me, but I continued to use a PC keyboard and a mouse because I was just familiar with it and I really didn't want to make that whole shift. I felt like I was already a big learning curve switching to a Mac, so switching the keyboard out was very, very strange. I finally ended up switching and I now do use a full-size Mac keyboard, but I have to admit, I still use a USB connected one because I find there are so many wireless interruptions around me, whether it's a cell phone, whether it's you know iPads and various things that are using wireless technology that I get lag sometimes with the keyboard or the mouse and I just, I'm sick and tired of it. So I stick to either a wired keyboard and a wireless mouse with a dongle nearby, so it's really a close connection, or wired everything. Yeah, I'm exactly the same. And it's funny because my main keyboard, my main daily driver is this one. It's the Logitech MX Keys for Mac. Uh, I love this keyboard. I've had it for a long time. Uh, and I went specifically for the Mac one because you can buy a PC version or you can buy like a combo version because this is a multi-connect device. You can connect up to three different devices on this keyboard. Not, you can't use them all at once, obviously, that wouldn't work very well, but what you can do is you can switch between those devices. So say, for example, a Mac, maybe a PC, maybe a phone, uh, and you can connect all three and you can switch between them using the little switch buttons on the keyboard. So it's really cool, but like you, you do have this issue where, you know, when you're using Bluetooth, any time a phone rings, even if my, my iPhone is sitting next to it, my connection will go. And lag is a real problem as well, especially when you're a screen reader user. You need to get that instant response. And hey, you don't, you'll know all about this. When it comes to audio editing, you need to have that instant response, right? So I'm with you. Now you can actually hook this up directly to the computer using a USB cable, USB-C to USB-A or USB-C to USB-C cable, whatever you need to connect to that device. You can do it that way. Okay, I gotta ask you, I gotta interrupt you and ask you a question here because we talk Mac specific, we talk PC specific. The fact of the matter is that these are all USB and these are all universally compatible with one another. You can use a PC keyboard on a Mac. You can use a Mac keyboard on a PC. The only thing that really differentiates them is that little button next to the keyboard. You know, whether it's going to be a Windows key or an Apple key, they work the same way. So does it really even matter when they market something as a Mac device versus a PC device? It doesn't connect any better to a Mac versus a PC, yet people sit here and they fall for they fall for all the uh, the advertising. I don't, for, for me, though, it's not about that. Because for me, what it's about, when I'm looking to buy a keyboard, and trust me, I mean, you know, I get deliveries of keyboards here. Not not sent to me, I buy them uh, because I'm like that. Uh, and you know, I'm gonna show you a keyboard in a second that I bought and I actually got for free, which was brilliant. Uh, thanks Amazon, I don't know how I managed that one, but I managed it. Uh, the price did a bit, did treble I think in, as soon as I bought it. So clearly they had made a mistake, but, um, but I look at lots of different factors. I look at how I'm going to use the device, where I'm going to use it. The next keyboard I'll show you is, is actually not used on a PC. It's not used on a Mac in my case uh, because I'm more interested in using a keyboard with my iPhone. When you use voiceover on the iPhone, it's actually easier to be able to type, especially using a keyboard. And that's why I bought this. Now this is, um, this is super cool. So I gave this to my wife and I said, what do you think this is? And she's holding it and she's looking at it and she's picking it up and she's turning it around and she's saying, I've got absolutely no idea what this thing is. And and there's a little clip on the side and when it opens up, it becomes a full size, full size keyboard. Hang on a second, hang on. Fold that back again. I want you to describe that to people. Describe what you're actually holding well, in your do you hand. Know what? Because this looks almost like a PlayStation or a tablet. It just looks like a little slate. It does. Like a little slate the size just of like an iPad mini or a little bit as like an iPhone Pro Max on its side. It's like one of those Nintendo Switches, I think, isn't it? It's like one of those kind of, you know, those devices that, you, you know, handheld, you'd be playing your games on it. I mean, I go back, I'm old enough to remember the Sega Game Gear. So, you know, that th this is reminiscent of that for me. But yeah, you could look 
clip here, and what happens is it opens up um, just like a book, and suddenly you have a keyboard. Now there are lots of these folding keyboards around, but generally they're not great, because the hinge is often the first thing to go, because you're folding it shut and then you're opening it up constantly, uh, the hinge can get broken or damaged. Now, I don't know how long this one will last, but this is from a company called Matthias, M-A-T-I-A-S. Could be Matthias, I've got no idea how they pronounce it. But what I do know is this is a really cool keyboard for a couple of reasons. It's full size, it's got great key travel. As you type on this thing, it is really nice to type on. It's got the full keyboard, huge cursor keys, not the little tiny ones you get even on today's keyboards by, by you know modern standards. You've got full size cursor keys, uh, you've got a full size number pad as well, and all the relevant keys, plus a full function row for visually impaired people who struggle with the function keys. They're all separated out, so you've got banks of four, then the next four, then the next four with a space between. So cool, and when you close it over and you feel around the back, you'll notice that when I open it up, you actually have two AA batteries, well, AAA actually batteries in there. So you don't have to charge this up or worry about whether it's charged or not. If it doesn't work, just take the batteries out and replace them. Simple as that. Connects to Bluetooth, um, and I think this one only connects to one single device, but I'm okay with that. Uh, the one downside to this one for me, not that it matters too much, uh, for those with any eagle eyes out there, you might notice that um, the writing on here is actually in German. That's why I got it, partly for free. <laughs> hang, on, hang, on, hang on a second, hang on a second. Is this the one that came to you for free? This is the one I told you about ages ago in the radio show. This is the one that came to me. It cost something like $10. I had like a $10 Amazon gift card in my account, so I got it for free. <laughs> and when I got it home, by the way, this cost, this was almost like $100 to buy from the company direct. And when I went on Amazon, they were selling it for $10. And I thought, I sniff myself a deal. And as a result, I buy this thing and then find out it's in German. But it doesn't matter because when you plug it in or you hook it up to any computer or any, in my case, the iPhone, you can choose the language. And in this case, it was English UK, so it was absolutely fine for me. Oh my God. Can you bring back the MX keys for a second, the original MX keys on camera for a moment? Because there's something that I noticed that I want to point out to the audience out there. And that is that you've okay. put one, two, three little red bumps on different keys. Now this is yes. something, and I know this seems like an obvious thing for you, but it's one of those things that when you talk to me about first putting bumps on different keys, I thought it was ingenious. What keys are you putting the bumps on and why? Okay, so everyone's different in this one. Um, I remember the first time I got my bumps, these little bump on, uh, the little orange bumps that I stick on my keys. I remember putting them- The little raised stickers, right? The little uh, raised yeah, tactile stickers. Exactly, they're, they they're, they're sticky at the bottom, they stick on kind of half moon style. Uh, you get lots of different ones, you get more more firm ones, you get you know bigger ones, smaller ones, you get all kinds. Um, you actually get these, you might not see them on camera, but there are tiny little ones, we call them little nipple uh, style. They're very small, uh, they're called lock dots. And what's really cool about those, I've got them on my on some of these keys, it's only because I've run out of some and you know had some available. So I've just had used different ones on different keys. But in this case, you know the little lock dots are fantastic for laptops, because when you shut the lid of a laptop, well, you don't really want a big bump on that's gonna damage your screen, right? Especially if it's a touch screen, you might end up touching something you didn't mean to. So in this case, I have it on F4, I have it on F6, and I have it on F8, and on F10 actually as well. Uh, and that means I know exactly where I am on the function row, and the same, I, I did have ones on the numbers, but they've fallen off. It is Double Tap TV, we're talking all things keyboard, Stephen Scott and Mark Aflala with you. We're gonna take a quick break, Stephen, because when I come back, I wanna talk about Apple keyboards, because there's something about Apple keyboards that, I don't know, I just, I just, I love me and Apple keyboard, but you shouldn't have to pay $2,000 just to get one with Touch ID. We'll talk about that in a moment here on Double Tap TV. Can't get enough Double Tap TV? Subscribe to the podcast and get your fill of Double Tap every day. Visit DoubleTapOnAir.com and follow us now. Double Tap TV will be right back. Thanks for watching this Double Tap video. If you like it, please hit that subscribe button and like it. And of course, that notification bell will let you know when we've got a new video like this to share. Thanks for watching.